There's a classic statement in healthcare that says that our food should be our medicine and our medicine should be our food. Today we're going to show you exactly how to do that. Hi, this is Dr. Christensen. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making bone broth and this is how I do it. And so do it as, as you'd like if you've got a better way, but, but this, this way works really well for us and our family. Um, when, when we use bone broth, the purpose of bone broth is to provide the body with the nutrients that the bones provide. The, 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 the minerals and, and so many of the, the other nutrients that will help the body to heal. Both bones and joints in, in the body. It's great for arthritis. It's great for the digestive tract. And so, so whether, whether you've got uh, digestive problems such as celiacs or irritable bowel or gluten intolerance, bone broth is one of the key tools that we use to, to heal the gut. And so it's, it's a great tool. We, when, when you think about bone broth, think about making soup. And so I, I know people that will boil their bones and, and, and strain the liquid and, and just drink it without flavoring, without salt, and to me that's, that's gross. And so what we want to do is we want to make delicious soup. And, that's, and this is how it starts. When using beef bones, and this can go for, for elk and deer as well, the first thing that we want to do is we want to take these bones and we want to roast them. We simply put them on a cookie sheet and we're going to roast them in the oven at 400 degrees for an hour. Your, your house will smell like wonderful roast beef. We find that the, the bone broth tastes so much better when you roast the bones. So we're going to put them into the oven here. And so we, we, we begin with roasted bones. Bones are roasted at 400 degrees for, for about an hour. They've been in the oven for, for a little over an hour now, so let's go ahead and take those out. I'm going to turn off my oven. And you can see, see the bones that, that we have here. Um, they, they, they smell wonderful. We begin with the, the roasted bones and, and we, we put those in, into the pot. And so we've got the bones in, into the pot. Uh, I took them out of the oven. The dog came running. She, she knows something is good in the air. The next thing that, that we do is we're going to add some, some carrot peels. And so whenever we peel a carrot in, in, in the house, the, the peelings always go into the bone broth. So we've got carrot peels, we've got onion skins. The onion skins will help the, the color of the, of the bone broth. Onion skins are actually used, or they were used as, as a dye. So I've got bits of onions, I've got the, the peels, all the things that, that you're, you're not going to want to eat. I've got the, the, the rest of that onion that, that was left over. I'll use that in something that I'm going to cook and make. I use the, the celery tops and the celery ends. And, and they go right into the, bot, into the, into the pot. The, the ends of my carrots, these are the ones that I just, just peeled. And so, again, all the, the bits and scraps, you can use potato peelings as, as well. And so I've got my... My, my, my bones, my carrot peels, my, my onion skins, celery. I'm going to add to this some peppercorns. And so I've got peppercorns I'm going to do, um, depending on how much you like it. I've got a tablespoon here. I'm going to probably put not quite a tablespoon. The next thing that, that will help is some apple cider vinegar. If you haven't washed our apple cider vinegar, video yet. It's, it's apple season. If you're watching this in the fall of 2016, uh, use your peels. And so I'm going to use just a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar that, that we made previously. It acts as a catalyst to help things. And then we, we simply add, add the water. How much water? Um, depends on, on, on how much you're going to make. And so, so, so you look at here, I've got a little less than a gallon. I would actually add a little bit more to that. And so I'm, I'm going to add about a gallon to this, to this pot. 
I'm about two inches from the from the top of the pot. You can stir it around a little bit. Uh, sometimes we'll we'll add some herbs and spices. You can add some thyme. You can add some oregano or basil. Often I'll just let it cook. I'm not putting salt in it at this point. When I'm ready to to taste it, I'll I'll put the salt in. And so I've got my my ingredients for my broth. I just bring it over over to the stove here. And I'm going to turn it on low. Now, the important thing with, with broth is we, we want to cook it for at least 12 hours. And it's not going to be a rolling boil. It's going to be a, it's going to be a simmer. So we don't want to see, see it boiling at all. And it, and it will just simmer. Um, you can keep your bone broth going for, for, for 12 to 24 to 48 hours for a week. And, and sometimes we'll do it a week. The, the pot that I'm going to show you here in just a moment has been on the stove for about a week. What we do at our house is, is we turn it off every night. And so we do not want to have anything running. And so you can make this on the stove. You can make it on in your crock pot. And I'll show you, show you what we've got in the crock pot here in just a moment. The point is, is, is it's, it's, it's long, slow cooking and that's what's going to get the nutrients out of the bone and it's, it's going to be delicious. So, so what I've got here is I've got my one, the one that I just started. I've got my, my pot here and I'm going to kind of show you what, the, what this, this, this looks like here. You can, you can see the, 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 the dark richness of, of, of the color of the bone broth here. I've got I've got some bones, you can see some onions, you can see some carrots. Um, there's all kinds of things. It looks kind of scary and nasty, um, but, but this, is, this is your bone broth. What we do is we, we, we strain, strain the bone broth. And so I'll strain some for you right here. And so I'm going I'm to strain some of this, this bone broth here. And you don't want to strain it when it's too hot. This is, this is, this is warm. It's, it's not too hot. I use a, a, a metal strainer and simply begin straining. Often we'll have bits of, of, of meat in with the, the, the bone broth. And so here, here you can see you know, a, a piece of meat. And what I'll do if I'm making soup is I'll, I'll take that meat out and, and cut it or tear it into bite-sized chunks. And so it's, it's simply a matter of straining your, your, your bone broth and down to the dog here. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and this, this bone broth smells delicious, as our little friend Patchouli here will attest. Mm -hmm. Once, once I've got this broth, there's, there's a couple things that I can do with this. This, this will go straight into the pot to make, to make soup. I'll add my spices. I'll add my, my, my chopped vegetables, whatever I'm going to do. I'll salt it to taste. And believe me, this is, this is really the best tasting soup that, that you'll ever experience. So here, here's another uh, option for, for making bone broth. Um, I believe that one of the great gifts of God was crock pots. And so here, here I've got a co crock pot here. It's been simmering away. You can see the steam ri rising here. And this is bone broth that was made with a rotisserie chicken. And so we, we just purchased a rotisserie chicken. We ate uh, most of the meat off of it and, and threw that into the crock pot. Here you, 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 you can see I've got some, some red onion skins that are, that are floating on the top. There's some skin of the chicken. Um, I, I, I reached down in here. You can actually see the string that was holding, holding things together. There's still quite a bit of meat on here. We're going to make chicken soup out of, out of this. We've got our onions. We've got our celeries. We've got carrot peels. You can put garlic in it. Again, it's going to make a delicious, delicious bowl of soup. And, and we do this with the crock pot. Again, we turn the crock pot we turn the crock pot off at night. And so I don't recommend leaving anything turned on at night while while you go to go to bed. And so again, crock pot as as another option. Rotisserie chickens are a great way to start out. 
Where do you buy your bones? We go to the butcher. All the butchers in our area now, now um, sell soup bones. They used to give them away until the demand went up and now they sell them. They're usually about $2 a pound and you, instead of the, the dog getting the bone, the, the, who are we? The, the bone broth makers get, get the bones. The dogs get them after we're done. How long can you use the bones? The bones that I've got in this pot here, we're going to use them again. I'm going to strain everything out, get the broth out of it, and then I'm going to add more, more water and let them go. We'll use the same bones two or three or four times sometimes. And so uh, historically, they used to say they would pass bones from one house to the next so that, that all the neighbors could enjoy the, the use of a good soup bone. Another thing that we've, we've been doing of late, which is kind of fun, is, is we've been reducing our bone broth till, till it's um, oh, about 25% of, of what we started with as far as the liquid is concerned. And, and so what we'll do is we'll, I'll put it in a pan, I'll let it gel, and then cut it into cu cubes and put it on the freeze dryer. And, and this is some, some of the bone broth that, that we've, we've freeze dried. And, and, and you can look at this. It looks like a little bouillon cube. I salted it before I reduced it, so I knew that the taste was right. And this is something I can simply just put into a, into a cup of, of hot water. It will reconstitute, and, I've, and I'll have some, some, some bone broth here in, in, a, in a cube form. And so remember with your bone broth, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be making soup. And so you, you put your, your salt in it, you put your herbs and spices, you're going you're gonna to make delicious soup. And don't be intimidated by it, by it. The other thing we do with our bone broth is, is when I'm making rice, instead of just using 100% water, I'll put a, a, a scoop or a cup or two of bone broth in replacing the, the water. And so your, your liquid will stay the amount. Experiment with the bone broth. Uh, we even put bone broth in, in smoothies. It works great. And um, have fun. And so if you, if you felt this was, was, was valuable to you, uh, please be sure to subscribe. Tell your friends about our YouTube channel. Again, our goal here is we want to help people get well and healthy as quickly and as economically as we can. And that depends on you. Thank you.